USA Lacrosse presents the 2022 Girls Youth Lacrosse Rules Interpretation Video. This video outlines the rule changes adopted for the 2022 season. The youth rule changes for 2022 include the allowance for expanded opportunities for unrestricted substitutions, adjustments to penalty administration for goalies, boundary restarts, and equipment clarifications. In order to prepare for the upcoming season, be sure to review the 2022 Girls Rules Book, the USA Women's Lacrosse Officials Training Manual, and all supplemental materials regarding these changes. In addition to these rule changes, the USA Lacrosse Rules Committee has identified the following points of emphasis. Sportsmanship. The Rules Committee wants to emphasize the critical role of sportsmanship in the safety and positive experience for the student athlete. The committee encourages officials to provide effective communication and game management to help deter acts of unsportsmanlike conduct. When such methods are not enough to manage behavior, those in violation should be held accountable with administration of cards. Rough and dangerous play. Minimizing the risk of the student athlete is a priority of the USA Lacrosse Girls Lacrosse Rules Committee. With the introduction of free movement, the displacement of players due to rough and dangerous play needs to be effectively managed and eliminated. Disruptive actions jeopardize the safety of players, impedes the flow of the game, and negatively affects the integrity of the sport. Rough and dangerous play consists of forceful contact of players with the body or the cross, reckless, dangerous, or intimidating checks within playing distance of the opposing player, and any other action with the body or cross that an official deems unsafe. Managing dangerous and rough play in the midfield will consistently be a focus. This year, the Rules Committee intends to bring more attention to recognizing these fouls as they continue into the critical scoring area by encouraging officials to apply the appropriate rules and utilize the card administration discouraging rough and dangerous play from continuing. Consistent officiating of repetitive fouling decreases the risk of injury, improves game management, and upholds the integrity of the game. Shooting space. Shooting space continues to be one of the most difficult rules to understand in girls lacrosse. It's important that the official knows and recognizes the criteria for making the call, which includes, the ball must be in the critical scoring area and above the goal line extended. The ball carrier must have the opportunity to shoot safely and be denied an opportunity to shoot by a defensive player in an illegal defensive positioning. The defensive player must be positioned in the lane between the ball carrier and the goal circle. The defensive player is not within a stick's length of an attack player. Shooting space is an immediate call and must be made to minimize the risk of injury. The attacking player is always responsible for not shooting if there is a shooting space violation. equipment related changes. There are few minor equipment related changes for the 2022 season. There is one important change impacting the goalkeeper. One, goalies are now allowed to wear tinted or transitional glasses under the helmets. Two, make note that the high school rule change does not apply to youth goalkeepers. Youth goalies are still required to wear shin guards. There are also some equipment modification clarifications for the 2022 season. The language around face masks was clarified to ensure that soft, non-abrasive masks that were worn for health, such as those worn during the pandemic or for religious reasons, could be worn. However, protective molded face masks are still prohibited. Additionally, some restrictions on hair and wrist accessories have been loosened. 
non-rigid and soft material like sweatbands and hair ties can be on the arm or wrist, while hair adornments, beads, or barrettes can be worn as long as they're secured and not a danger to other players. Use of personal audible devices. The rule now specifically outlines that officials can wear personal audible devices during competition to aid in communication as the pace of play has increased. Substitution rules. The allowances for when substitutions can occur has greatly expanded in alignment with the free movement. Some notable changes include during injury and timeouts, between overtime periods, during the administration of a card, and during a redraw. Substitutions must now follow these parameters. One, they must go through the sub box. Two, the player subbing in must still wait for the player to exit the field unless it's after a goal. Three, a player cannot enter the field after the official's hand is on the sticks for the draw. Four, during the administration of a penalty, the offending player and player awarded the ball cannot be subbed. Five, if the player subbing adds an extra or an illegal player to the field. Six, an ejected player cannot be returned to the official timeouts. Official timeouts have been expanded to now include one, offside fouls, two, alternate possession, and three, inadvertent whistle. These situations are added to the existing official timeouts such as injury, issuance of card, and redraw. The exception remains for a redraw after goals with a 10 goal differential. Stop clock. In 2022, the clock no longer must stop on every whistle in the last two minutes and in overtime. During the last two minutes in an overtime, it still must stop for one, officials timeout, two, goals, three, fouls in the critical scoring area. The exception remains if there is a running clock for a 10 goal lead, the clock will run for fouls in the critical scoring area, goals, and redraws. Resuming play. Resuming play on boundary balls. To resume play when the ball has gone out of bounds, the player may now commence play with a self start from out of bounds relative to the spot where the ball went out of bounds when self starts are allowed. The clock is not stopped. The rule change eliminates the option for a whistle start and a self start from inbounds. The rule language also clarifies the engagement guidelines specifying that the opponent can engage when the ball carrier enters the field. It also clarifies defensive positioning, stating that all players must be two meters from the boundary line. And lastly, it changes the penalty for passing from out of bounds. If a player throws the ball in from out of bounds, it is a minor foul and a change of possession. Player positioning on the draw. Player positioning on the draw. This rule change greatly simplifies the application of draw positioning for players, so the draw positioning is only required for instances where a draw is being taken. Therefore, it is not a foul, free position, at the center, including scoring fouls, draw positioning is no longer required. If possession has been assigned, then draw positioning does not apply. The establishment of a new minor foul for illegal exchange of sticks establishes the correct procedure for swapping sticks with a player on the field. The stick must now be passed through the sub box. Major fouls false starts by the goalkeeper. This rule change allows the goalie to remain in the goal circle for the free position when the goalie false starts and the penalty administration is at the nearest dot. This is the exception to major fouls in the critical scoring area that, one, the goalie does not have to go behind, and two, the administration is at the dot 
not the eight meter free position. Changes to the goal circle rules now provide an allowance for the goalkeeper to have one foot out of the goal circle to bring the ball back into the goal circle as long as one foot is in or on the goal circle. Reminder that the goal circle line is in itself considered part of the goal circle and as long as one of the goalie's feet is within the plane of the line, she is able to bring the ball back in. Specific rule changes for use only. Offside. The offside requirements for cross field small sided play has been eliminated. The intent is to foster more passing and to provide more opportunity for player involvement when on the field. Ground balls. The restriction on the number of players who can contest a ground ball has also been removed. This rule change was to align with the older levels of play and to enhance the player experience on the field. Thank you all for reviewing this video and the rule changes for 2022. Have a great season.